Now, who is that? Some of you, I heard somebody say they think they know what it is, but I'm going to maybe be, tell you to be cautious here before we make any conclusions about this. Very interesting. To say, I love mysteries, and the Bible is full of mysteries, and sometimes we need to be careful that don't, we don't intertwine tradition with what the Bible says. Uh, so we're going to look at it strictly from what the Bible says today. We're going to look at this guy called B.D., the beloved disciple. And he only appears in the Gospel of John. Now, the Gospel of John is a very interesting gospel. It's not at all like Matthew, Mark, or Luke. The Gospel of John has, has long speeches by Jesus. It has incidents in, in, in the gospel that none of the other gospels talk about. In fact, we just read the story about that happens at the Last Supper. And in and John's gospel, Jesus doesn't even break the bread or, or share the cup. Instead, he washes the disciples' feet. So very different emphasis in John's gospel. And it's only in John's gospel that we are introduced to this mysterious person called the beloved disciple. And he appears in only four stories. I think it's four stories. I'm going to, to, I'm going to go through them anyway so you can count them. Four times we run into him, maybe five. There might be a five, uh, fifth uh, indication of this disciple. And in these uh, four stories, I'm counting them right now just to make sure. Yep, there's four. In these four stories, he's mentioned five times. So I'm going to share these stories with you, and you will see, are there any clues as to who this person is? Because there's been a lot of conjecture over the years about this disciple, and a lot of theories about who it might be. So we were introduced to him in this story. He's a disciple who, at the Last Supper, was reclining at Jesus, at Jesus' side. Okay? There's a clue there, possibly. The next time we run into this disciple is in... The 19th chapter, the 26th verse, you might want to write these down, you can look them up later. Uh, but in the 19th chapter, the 26th verse, we, we uh, hear of him again. Now we're at the cross. We're at the cross. Jesus is being crucified, and it says, Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, comma, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. There might be another clue right there who this person is. So anyway, he's at the cross. Then we run into him again in chapter 20, verse 2. Going to back up to the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, so on. So far, this says the two of them ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down, looked in, and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. So we run into him for a third time. And then there's a fourth time, after the resurrection. We're told that seven of the disciples go back to the Sea of Galilee, and one day they're fishing. And while they're fishing, it says, after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but they did not know that it was Jesus. And he says, don't you have any fish? And they said, no. And he said, well, cast your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. Verse 7, The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that, you know, the story, he puts on his clothes, he jumps in the sea, he swims ashore, and they have breakfast with Jesus. So here we have the beloved disciple again. And then in the same story later on, you remember how Jesus and Peter have this conversation. Peter says, do you love me three times? And Peter says, you know, of course I do. It's a reflection of the three denials. And um, Jesus, uh, Peter's opportunity to repent. But then in the 20th verse, it says, Peter turned, he's with Jesus. He says, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. And he was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper. And he said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Is he going to be around for a well, while? Peter, Jesus says, it is up, it's, it's my will that he remain until I come again. What's that to you? Follow me. Anyway, he's just, so he's just, there he, there he appears again. So 
there's these four references, five references and four different stories to this guy, um, this person called the beloved disciple. And in none of the cases is he identified by name. Now there is one other speculation, I'm just going to throw this in, that uh, this, he may also appear in the 18th chapter of John. And in that case, in this, this is, Jesus has been arrested, he's been taken to the high priest, and it says, starting with the 15th verse, Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went in with Jesus in the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside the gate, so the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. And that leads, of course, to Peter's denial. Now, that, in this case, this other disciple is not referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loved, or the beloved disciple, but again, he's not named, so there's been speculation that this disciple may also be the same beloved disciple of Jesus, which would lead us to some other clues as to who he was. So who was he? That's the first question. The second question is, why isn't he named? Why doesn't the author of the gospel name this person? Well, there's been a lot of speculation uh, about who this person was. Uh, one of the more interesting speculations, I found this on the internet, um, is there's one guy who, who claims somehow to be able to prove that the beloved disciple was Judas. Now, I didn't buy the guy's book to find out how, I, how he comes to that. I wasn't going to go that far. Uh, I, I don't know how you could say that because obviously Judas isn't around for the rest of the story, and yet this guy is around. Um, clearly at the Sea of Galilee. So I, don't, I think we can eliminate that. But that's, you know, speculation runs wild when you come up with these mysteries. Uh, another speculation, of course, a wild one, is that it was Mary Magdalene. We talked about that last week when we met Mary. And uh, there's the Da Vinci's picture of the Last Supper, and there's the disciple that's reclining on, next to Jesus with longer hair, and being, well, it looks like a woman. Maybe it was Mary Magdalene. I think we can discount that. We'll do that in just a moment. Um, another interesting one is that some, some have suggested it was Lazarus. That Lazarus was the beloved disciple. Um, others suggest it might have been um, uh, a member of the high priestly clan. It might have been Nicodemus. Could have been Joseph of Arimathea. These are all speculations. And, and uh, people have come up with all kinds of theories to try to prove one or another of these. The most common one, and I heard somebody shout this out already, or mumble it, I guess. Uh, and that is that it was John. The beloved the, the blo disciple was actually John, one of the twelve, the son of, or, yeah, the son of Zebedee and the brother of James, and that he was the beloved disciple. In fact, um, tradition says that the Gospel of John was written by this disciple, um, and that uh, maybe the reason why this beloved disciple is not named by name is because John was simply being humble. So that, that's probably the most widely accepted theory is that it was John. But the bottom line is that we don't know for sure. Nobody can prove absolutely 100% who this beloved disciple was. So what do we know about this disciple? What can we say for sure? Well, he was a disciple. Some people say, well, that proves that he was one of the twelve. No, because in the Gospel of John, when John uses the word disciple, he's referring to anyone who followed Jesus. And there were hundreds of disciples, so it could have been anybody uh, from the twelve or outside of the twelve. It, he, he's referred to as a he, him, or his. So unless somebody's trying to really uh, cover up the story, it, it had to be a man. That eliminates half the population. Um, so we can assume it was a man. Um, here's some interesting other things that we get out of some of the clues of these stories. In John 19, 27, the story where Jesus says to Mary, you know, to this disciple and to Mary, now take, take Mary and my mother and take her into, and from that moment, he took her into his home. Now, that's an interesting clue, because that would indicate that his home was in Jerusalem. That would eliminate John, the disciple. The Apostle John, because he wouldn't have had a home in Jerusalem. So it would indicate it might have been somebody else. Could have been like somebody like Lazarus or somebody from the high priestly clan. That also takes us back to the story in the upper room where it says he was reclining next to Jesus. 
would indicate that maybe this is the person in whose home they celebrated the Last Supper, and as the host, he would have the place of honor next to Jesus. There were more than 12 at the supper. Um, if, indeed, this is the person that helped Peter get into the courtyard of the high priest, it would indicate it was somebody who had some connections, somebody who knew how to get into sensitive areas. Uh, he was known to the high priest, if that, indeed, is the case. And the fact that he stood near the cross, 